Hi there, this is Salman and you are watching the Genesis YouTube channel. In the last video, I left you with a question in which you had to find the force between a half cylinder and a plate and in addition, there were slits formed along the half cylinder. If you haven't watched that video, you can pause this and read the question and try to figure out how the diagram would look like, how the situation is and then proceed with the rest of the video. The link to the question video is there in the description as well as in the i button. Now, many students messaged me that they had difficulty in drawing the diagram. Now understand, it was mentioned that there is a bisector plane. Now the bisector plane of the cylinder is this plane and the planes which are containing the slits are these two planes. It was mentioned in the question that the angle between the bisector plane and the slit planes is theta. In this, you can see that the slits have been shown in the black regions. Now, it is much easier to see the diagram from the front, that is, like this. So, you have the half cylinder with portions H symmetrically cut out. These angles here are theta each, and the slits in which material is not present have width h each. Now, to solve this, what we do is since this remaining of the half cylinder is charged with charge density sigma 1, we fill in plus and minus sigma 1 into these slits. What will these slits become then? A superposition of plus and minus sigma 1 charge density thin wires. So now if I fill in the gaps with plus and minus sigma 1, I get a situation in which the gap has both plus sigma 1 and minus sigma 1. The plus sigma 1 region has been shown with the blue color and the minus sigma 1 has been shown with the red color. Now understand here the blue and the red overlap. Just to show you clearly in the diagram, I have drawn the red part slightly below. It is not as if the minus sigma wires are dangling below the surface. They are in the gap superposed on the plus sigma 1. Just for diagrammatic clarity, I have shown it separate. So now imagine the whole plus sigma 1 completes the half cylinder. Right? So now we can think of this situation as a superposition of two configurations. First one where you have the whole half cylinder of plus sigma 1 with the plate and the second situation where you have two thin wires having width h length l because this side length was given to be l for the half cylinder so we can say that the situation is a superposition of whole of half cylinder interacting with the plate and two thin wires of minus sigma 1 interacting with the plate so now this is how we will proceed in the problem. We will first find the force due to this positively charged sigma 1 half cylinder and then we will find the force F minus due to these negatively charged thin wires on the plate. And then when we do a proper vector sum of these two forces, we should get the net force that is there on the plate in the actual situation. Let us first calculate the force between the complete half cylinder and the flat plate. Now, if I take small parts of the small cylinder and if I take any point on the flat plate, say a point like this, then we can say that the field, these red parts will be like long wires and the net field will be directed somewhat like this. Now, calculation of this field, we are not interested in. It will be, in general, difficult to do. So, what we do is, whatever distance you took this point from the bisector axis, whatever distance you took it, take another point like this and see what is the situation here. Now, you see, the situation is exactly symmetrical and the force will be like this. This immediately shows that only the component of force which is perpendicular to the plate is important here. The ones which are parallel to the plate will cancel out. Now since I can divide the whole half cylinder into pairs like this, 
I can assert that this is going to happen for the whole plate as well. So we realize that we need to bother only about the perpendicular component of the force. Now to calculate the perpendicular component of the force, we take a strip of area DA on the flat plate. This is shown by the green part here. And in three dimensions, this is how the strip looks like. What is the charge on this one? The charge here will be sigma 2 into DA. So we can say that the force experienced by this strip and we are only bothered with the perpendicular component. So the component of the force perpendicular to this strip is charge of this strip into perpendicular component of the field of the half cylinder at this location. Therefore, we can write df plus is charge on that element into the perpendicular component en1 of the half cylinder at the location of this small strip that we have taken. And as we are only interested in the force component which is perpendicular to the plate, the net force will simply be the integral of this one. And so we get integral of sigma 2 dA into en1. Now sigma 2 you can take out of the integral because it's a constant. Now look at this integral. And it is the correct interpretation of this integral which is going to make the calculation easier. If you actually start calculating this, this is going to become very cumbersome. And this is where the idea of flux comes in. Remember from your study of electrostatics that the flux due to an electric field is defined as E vector dot unit normal into dA. And this can be written as E normal into dA because E dot product with the unit normal gives the normal component of the field. Does this expression which I have squared out here does it look like a flux? Yes. Whose field is it? Half cylinders. At which location? On the flat sheet. Now that we have understood that this somehow relates to flux, let us try to see how the field is so that we can evaluate this flux. So to do so, look at this diagram. Here I have taken a small part of the cylinder and plotted its field. Now this small part is actually a wire which is coming out of the plane of paper and going into the plane of paper. So the field is axial for such a situation. We know that from our basic electrostatics. Another thing to note is such element if I connect with the extreme positions of the plate shown by the solid orange lines, we see that this angle is going to be 90 degrees because this essentially becomes angle on the diameter of a circle. So we know this is 90 degrees and this will hold for any location of the element. You draw the element anywhere, you take the element anywhere. The same 90 degree angle will be there everywhere. Now understand this, this is an axial field. Please understand this is the field due to a wire. This element that we have taken is a wire. It's not a point charge. So the field lines are not spreading uniformly in four pi star radians. Okay. It is spreading axially and whatever is happening in this plane is happening in every plane stacked over it and stacked below it. Right. So we can say that in this plane, the field lines are distributed on a 2 pi radian angle that is 360 degree angle. So how much of the field lines are going through this 90 degree part? Of course, one fourth of the field lines and therefore whatever is the total flux due to this wire, only one fourth flux passes through this plate. Now, if this wire had a charge dq, then the flux due to that will be dq by epsilon naught and we understand one fourth of that is going to pass through the plate. Now, if I take such dq elements across the half cylinder, the total flux will simply be the addition of this. So here, this dq will become the total charge on the cylinder. Therefore, this quantity, which is the flux of the half cylinder across the plate is total charge on the plate divided by 4 epsilon naught. And this is what I have written here. Total charge on the plate, sigma 1 is the charge per unit length, pi rl is the curved surface area that we have divided by 4 epsilon naught and this gives the calculation of force. 
Notice how relating the idea of flux to the force calculation reduces our calculations tremendously. This is not really an integration that we have to do. It's basically kind of a summation that we are doing. With this done, let us move on to the second part, which is calculation of force on the plate due to these wires. This minus sigma 1 wires of width h and length l across the plane of paper. Now you can see by the arguments that we used in this part, you should be able to show that even here the force will be perpendicular to the plate. I leave that to you. If you have followed what we did in the first part, the way we argued that the force has to be perpendicular, here also the same thing will happen and therefore the calculation after this also is not very different. It is extremely simple. Now we can write df minus as charge on a strip like this, the kind of strip we have chosen here, charge on a strip like this into the normal component of the electric field due to sigma 1. Here it will be due to minus sigma 1 wires. So this En1 is the field due to these wires and En1 represents the field component which is perpendicular to the plate. So F minus will be integral of this. Again, sigma 2 goes out and by the same logic that we used here to calculate the flux due to this wire, we get again for this one, the flux will be the total charge on these wires divided by 4 epsilon naught. So 2 sigma 1 hl, each of these wires is of width h and length l. So it is 2 sigma 1 hl divided by 4 epsilon naught. This gives you the calculation of f minus vector. So the total force will be the vector sum of these two. Here they are anti-parallel, so it is just the subtraction of these two. And this gives you the answer sigma 1 sigma 2 l by 4 epsilon naught into pi r minus 2h. Notice that the result is independent of that angle theta. Now, further question for you. If instead of taking those two angles of theta and theta, if I had given you alpha and beta, unequal angles, then what would be your answer? Write the answer in the comments. What do you think? What should the answer be? That is a work for you. So if you have learned something from this video, like, subscribe and share widely amongst your friends. And as always, till the next time, stay safe and stay healthy you all.